there are quite some Pokemon in the franchise that are quite bad or mediocre, but would be very good with just one simple change. Obvious examples include Pokemon that are very hindered by their ability, like the infamous Regigigas, Slacking and Archaeops being held back by the ability Slow Start, Truant and Defeatist respectively. There are many more Pokemon that greatly benefit from one minor change and that is exactly what we will be taking a look at today. But I could not do this alone, so I asked my fellow Pokemon YouTuber Blip Exists to join me. Blip, what do you have to say to the people? Hey there folks, the name's Blip and I'd like to talk about Avalug. Oh, and I guess other random Pokemon showdown stuff. We will not be going over every Pokemon, but some examples that we found interesting. Also make sure to subscribe to both me and Blip, as we are both on our way to 4000 subscribers. And we will be doing a follow up to this video on his channel as well, so you don't want to miss that. I already mentioned Pokemon that are very hindered by their ability, using Regigigas, Slacking and Archaeops as an example. Another very interesting Pokemon that suffers from this is the newly introduced Toadscrew. Toadscrew had the potential to be an incredible utility Pokemon, especially with its good speed tier at base 100 and good special bulk. Toadscrew also has incredible utility moves with Spore, Spikes, Rapid Spin and Knockoff. Base 100 speed would make Toadscrew the fastest Spore user in the game, however this is not the case. Why? While well, Toadscrew is cursed with the ability Mycelium Might, which is an ability that ignores abilities when using a status move but makes it so that the Pokemon will move last within the priority bracket. This means that when Toadscrew uses Spore or Spikes, it will in most cases move last, so no fast Spore after all. At least Toadscrew does have a small niche in competitive signals as a Golden Go check that can also bypass its ability Kudos Gold and put it to sleep and being one of the few rapid spinners that can threaten it. Toadscrew can also ignore Garganeckle's Purifying Salt and Hatterene's Magic Bounce ability being able to freely use Spore and Spikes on them. It moves less, severely hurts its viability though, and many players don't think the trade-off is worth it. Most Pokemon would receive minimal benefit from a single stat point increase. Not even a base stat increase, just a single stat increase to the total stat. Some Pokemon in a crowded speed tier would benefit, but other than that, it would be inconsequential. However, in the case of Shedinja, one more point of HP would revolutionize how it plays. Shedinja is hard-coded to have exactly 1 HP, and this is with good reason. With only a single more hit point of HP, Shedinja could survive one hit from its most common checks, whether a single turn of Sandstorm, a switch into Stealth Rocks, or a tick of Toxic. This is with even a single point of stat increase, however. If Shedinja's HP stat was calculated the same way other Pokemon's HP stat were, it would be able to take numerous hits from the aforementioned effects, though its bulk would still be minimal enough to not take any super effective attacks. This would make KOing Shedinja a very difficult effort, as you would need to either rely on super effective moves or Mold Breaker, two things that not every team would have. Fortunately, Shedinja is given the special treatment of only having 1 HP. Another very interesting example of a Pokemon that would be absolutely insane, which is one more stat point, is the newly introduced Bubonnet, the best paradox form of Among Us. Among Us has seen a lot of success in competitive singles and VGC, especially VGC, as it offers insane utility and team support with the move Spore, Rage Power, Ball and Puff, and its ability Regenerator. Among Us's biggest problem, however, is that it is very slow. So even though it can put something to sleep with Spore, it will usually move last. Brute Bonnet also has Spore, and this Pokemon would be the fastest Spore user in the game if it only had one more point in its speed stat. At first glance, this might not seem like the case, as Brute Bonnet is very slow, too, with a base 55 speed stat. However, Brute Bonnet has the ability Protosynthesis, which boosts its highest stat by 30% or 50%, if that stat is speed, when sun is up, or if it is holding the booster energy item. Brute Bonnet does however have a high attack stat. 
meaning that even if you would reduce Brute Bonus attack stat to the lowest amount possible and increase its speed stat to max, its attack would still be one point higher than its speed stat, meaning it cannot gain a speed boost through Protosynthesis. If it had just one more point in its speed stat, it would be absolutely a terrorizing VGC with fast spores and would be a very good Pokemon in competitive singles as well. And while it would need a bit more than a single more point in a stat, Hydragon is another Pokemon that is so close to being good, and would be good with minimal adjustment. Hydreigon is in UU, so while it's not bad, it's far behind other pseudo-legends like Dragonite and Garchomp, at least in Generation 9. This is in large part due to Hydreigon's space speed of 98. While 98 isn't bad, it is 2 points of speed away from 100 base speed, which is a very common speed stat. To see how important this speed stat is, look to a Pokemon like Garchomp, whose success is in part due to its base speed of 102, allowing it to outspeed many more Pokemon than Hydreigon can. Take for example in Gen 9 OU, where two Pokemon fall into the speed gap between the two. If you include Hydreigon's tier of UU, four more Pokemon fall into this category. In other generations, this speed difference can be even more impactful. Take for example Hydreigon's debut generation of Generation 5, where 7 Pokemon in OU fall in between the speeds of 98 and 102, with even more in UU. Because the value of the speed stat is almost solely based on the opponent's speed, these small differences can hugely affect the viability of these Pokemon. But at least it's not poor Haxorus, getting one less speed than Hydragon. Chandelure is a very strong Pokemon, with its great offensive typing with Ghost Fire, and a very high special attack stat at base 135. Chandler almost received the ability that would make this Pokemon super broken, this being Shadow Tech. Shadow Tech is an ability that traps and prevents the opponent from switching out. Shadow Tech is an incredibly strong ability in both competitive singles and VGC, as switching is a key aspect of both formats, and being able to prevent that is game changing. If you were to send out Chandelure against a Chestnut, for example, you can easily threaten it with a fire move. The opponent could then send out a counter to Chandelure like Blissey. However, with Shadow Tech, Chestnut would not be able to switch out, giving Chandelure a free guaranteed KO. It's for this reason that the ability Shadow Tech is even banned from competitive singles on Smogon. Regieleki is balanced solely around the fact that it can't hit ground types. Its most effective special move against ground types is the 60 base power round. This low base power is exaggerated by Regieleki's middling special attack stat of 100. Falling into a similar category is Jolteon, though to a much lesser extent. As opposed to Regieleki's rock electric and normal coverage, Jolteon exchanges Regieleki's rock coverage for ghost coverage. This makes it slightly better against ground types, but overall lacks good coverage, which is exceedingly necessary due to its only passable special attack stat. However, both of these Pokemon were given that one little bit of power they needed with Terra, giving both of them access to the wonderful Bolt Beam coverage, with Terra Ice to provide the Beam in Bolt Beam. Jolton was able to rise to NU from PU due to this, in part also because it gained Calm Mind. Regieleki, however, was given one of the fastest OU bans in history, due to outspeeding everything and hitting everything at least neutrally. This is one example where you can see not only the flaw, but also see the flaw being fixed. Cloth was a Pokemon that players were kind of excited about because of its signature ability Anger Shell, raising its attack, special attack and speed by one stage, while lowering its defense and special defense by one. This is basically a mini version of the move Shell Smash, which is a great setup move in competitive singles. The reason people were excited is because it was assumed that Cloth would be able to learn the aforementioned Shell Smash, and thematically, it makes sense. So yeah, imagine the disappointment when it got found out that it does not learn Shell Smash. Adding Shell Smash to Cloth's move pool would make it a pretty good sweeper as it could use focuses to lift any hit, get the boost from Anger Shell, and use Shell, Shell Smash as well, leaving it with plus 3 attack and speed. This would not make Cloth a top tier Pokemon by far, as it still has too many problems like its poor offensive typing and the infestation of priority moves, 
but it would give it a niche as a great sweeper in the lower tiers. If Rillaboom had access to Grassy Glide, it would almost certainly be great in OU, but instead is a decent enough UU Pokemon. Grassy Glide is typically not a good move, due to it only getting priority in grassy terrain, and having a bad base power of 60. However, Rillaboom gets the ability Grassy Surge, meaning that Grassy Glide will almost always have priority, and while 60 base power isn't a lot, it gains a 30% power boost in Gens 8 and 9, due to grassy terrain. This allows Rillaboom to outspeed even the fastest of offensive threats, and deal massive damage. However, in Generation 9, Rillaboom lost access to Grassy Glide, causing it to drop from OU to UU, as well as Grassy Glide being decreased from 70 to 60 base power. And just like Rillaboom, Tapu Bulu would be much better with access to Grassy Glide, due to also having the ability Grassy Surge. Overall, Grassy Glide would likely not impact any Pokemon much, besides these two. And no, I'm sorry, but Trailblaze is not a substitute for Grassy Glide, as it has both less base power and is much less of an immediate threat. What are some other Pokemon that you think would be insane with just one simple change? Let me know down in the comments below. Check out the videos on the screen and make sure to check out Blip as well. Thank you for watching and see you next time.